I'm Justin Kennington, president of the SDVOE Alliance. I'm here today to talk to you about a very exciting transition in the world of AV signal management. This transition strikes at the very heart of the way we've moved audio and video signals for the last 75 years or more. Today I'm here to tell you that the matrix switch is dead. The last big transition for the pro AV industry was in 2008-2009 when we ended analog distribution. This was led by technologies like HD Base T, and those technologies enabled those with vision to become new leaders in the signal distribution marketplace. Today our industry stands at the precipice of a new transition, a transition from the old way of circuit-based switching and matrix switches to advanced AV over IP systems. This is an opportunity for new market leaders, and in fact we'll see as we explore this topic that Pro-AV, our space, has been something of a holdout in the broader community of audio and video technology. To get into this, let's talk a little bit about the old way of doing things. Matrix switches are a form of what's called a circuit switch. Circuit switch is really a very simple concept to understand. Uh, it's a device that builds individual wired connections or circuits uh, from point A to point B. You can think back to the old telephone system with, with telephone operators manually plugging in patch cords with their tiny little fingers uh, to dial up Pennsylvania 65000. Of course, as that technology advanced over time, we move away from individual operators plugging in patches to electromechanical devices and eventually into the solid state digital devices that can be very high speed uh, that we use today. Now circuit switches carry a lot of advantages with them. This is why every communication technology really starts out uh, being distributed and switched through a circuit. The bandwidth from point A to point B is always purely dedicated, right? No one else's traffic is going on, on on the line from your home to the central switching station to your friend's home for your telephone call. There's very low overhead, right? I don't need to add extra bits about where this information is headed. I simply make a connection and everything that goes on that connection is the actual communication itself. And this means there's also no timing uncertainty. We'll talk a little more about why that's important, uh, but especially in a synchronous communication like audio or video, it's very important that the bits uh, or the data arrive on time and in order. So circuit switches make that very easy because again, there's, there's nothing interfering in that signal path. What comes in goes to the other side in order. However, circuit switches have disadvantages. This is why also in all communication technologies eventually the circuit switch is replaced with a better technology. Some of those disadvantages are dedicated I.O. Right? This means that every port on a device is either an input or it's an output. This leads to very large complex circuit boards that can be very expensive to develop and maintain. Uh, it makes the systems very inflexible. Right? Taking it back to a, to a concrete Pro AV example, it's very rare that you actually need a 32 input, 32 output switch, yet that's what you can buy when you need 27 by 11 or 15 by 22. You end up buying more infrastructure than you need simply because of the inflexibility of this system, because those inputs and outputs are dedicated to their function. Furthermore, stacking these switches is, is difficult and expensive at best. Of course, you can connect a network of matrix switches to one another, but you end up needing a very large switch in the middle and a, and a, and a complex and very expensive hierarchy of switches uh, to develop truly large systems. And then finally, the infrastructure that you have is fully dedicated. We sort of touted that as an advantage of the circuit switch a moment ago, but in the real world where, where infrastructure is an investment and where I'd like to be able to, to get multiple functions out of everything I do, having pure dedicated infrastructure for the purpose of transmitting one audio signal or one video signal uh, is really not an effective way. So, okay Justin, that's great. I guess we're in trouble. What do we do? Well, the better approach is of course packet switching. What is packet switching? It's a, it's a totally different, fundamentally different technology to circuit switching. Um, it means we're going to send the data across a network. Um, we're going to have to add a little bit of information to the core data that we want to transmit, and that might be in the form of an address, right? Where do I want this packet to go? You can think of the, the postal service as a packet switched system, right? You write your content down on your letter, but then you put it in an envelope, write the address of where you need it to go, and then trust that the postal carriers know how to get it eventually to that address. That's what packet switching is, even in electronic form. And of course, Ethernet is the biggest, most, most commonplace packet switching technology of all. 
Ethernet is critical to our industry and of course to every other industry uh, that touches technology, that touches communication. It's important to understand just how foundational it is. Uh, Ethernet as a specification was first ratified in 1973. So Richard Nixon was president. Um, I like to invite audiences to think about all the technologies you've used today that are more than 44 years old. And, and you'll quickly see that that list becomes things like the wheel and fire. Uh, there are no other digital communication systems uh, on that list. Uh, and that really speaks to the power of Ethernet as, as the foundation of sort of all technology communications that we have in the world. Um, all Ethernet does over time, as it's evolved these 44 years, is get faster and faster. Uh, and, and if you look at the progress of technology across industries, what happens is one day Ethernet becomes fast enough to move the bits that you need moved around, and it comes and takes your job. So where is Ethernet today in Pro-AV? It's actually in Pro-AV and elsewhere. Um, it's, it's the phone system, right? It's the Internet itself. Um, and in the audio-video space beyond Pro-AV, um, it's, it's consumer AV, right? You get your videos from YouTube and from Facebook. Your cable TV system is delivered over IP infrastructure these days. The broadcast side of AV has already gone through their transition from SDI matrices into 10 gig IP based distribution. So in fact, Pro-AV is a bit of a holdout and we'll talk a little in a, in a minute about why that is and why it doesn't have to be that way anymore. Meanwhile, let's talk about the advantages of packet switching. Honestly, it's a who's who of the disadvantages of circuit switching, right? So every port is bi-directional in an Ethernet system. It can be an input, it can be an output, or it can even be both at the same time. Trunk ports on Ethernet switches mean it's very easy to cascade and scale these systems from simple little six port or eight port devices up into hundreds or thousands of ports in a single routing system. And then, of course, by, by jumping from a, a sort of purpose-built proprietary matrix switch architecture into the world of IT switching and Ethernet infrastructure, we get to enjoy Moore's Law and the price curve that comes with that. That means that uh, the cost of our systems can now fall, uh, you know, cut in half every, every 18 months, as we expect from, uh, from high volume computer and communication electronics. Every enterprise customer that you already have already has an enterprise class Ethernet infrastructure installed. So we no longer have to have a conversation about let's install this new technology, let's install a dedicated switch for your video management, and instead we can just have a simpler conversation about expanding their existing network infrastructure to be able to, to meet these new use cases. So why can we do it now? Right? This all sounds great. Why haven't we been doing it for years in Pro-AV? And, and there have been three sort of fundamental drivers holding us up, all of which have now been overcome. The first of those is bandwidth. You can imagine that video signals do require a ton of bandwidth uh, to maintain their quality. In fact, if you look over the, the history of Ethernet communications and video communications, we're actually at a very interesting point in that history right now. And that's the point where the, the mainstream Ethernet bandwidth available, and today that means 10 gigabit per second, is actually greater than the mainstream video formats that we need to transmit today. So let's look back at the past. If you rewind 10 years ago, we were thinking about 720p, we were thinking about 1080i. The bandwidth of those raw video signals is around 1.5 gigabits per second. And yet the commodity Ethernet technology available was only 1 gigabit per second. So it didn't quite fit. Um, go back 20 years ago, uh, imagine a, a digital VGA, that signal would take 400, 500 megabits per second, um, and yet it wouldn't fit on our 100 megabit per second Ethernet. Today, 10 gigabit Ethernet is ubiquitous, and that is sufficient to carry the 1080p signals, and the 4K signals that we require in a high performance video system. This trend is only going to continue as Ethernet data rates become faster and faster. And although video rates will do the same thing, we can now trust that there will always be space on our Ethernet network to manage the signals that we have. The second thing that's held up this transition until now has been cost. I talked about needing a, a commodity level Ethernet technology to solve this job. Right? So 10 years ago, in 2007, a 10 gigabit Ethernet port was available only on fiber optics and would cost you around $1,200 per port. So you can imagine that leads to very expensive systems. And yet today, 
10 gigabit Ethernet is available on copper, it's available on fiber, and you can literally go on Amazon.com and buy a 10 gigabit per second Netgear switch for $80 a port. And I'm talking with free prime shipping, not even a, a big enterprise level customer making large bulk purchases. Uh, this stuff is very cheap. That compares to your HD based T switch, the dedicated circuit switch system, where those costs can run up to $1,000 a port. And guess what? Those switches get more expensive over time, right? It's very expensive for a matrix switch manufacturer to develop a new higher speed product. And so you've seen, as we've transitioned from 1080p to 4K to 4K60, the price of matrix switches are going up. Meanwhile, in that time, the price of 10 gig ethernet is still falling at around 35% a year. And the final piece of this puzzle is we need a technology to deliver audio and video signal across an ethernet network. The fundamental challenge is that audio and video, as we talked about earlier, are, are synchronous signals. Timing matters deeply to these signals' functionality. This is why doing it on a circuit switch is easy. However, Aptovision have developed a new technology called adaptive clock resynchronization that allows a synchronous audio-video signal to pass through an Ethernet network and then become reconstructed on the other side with exactly the timing that came in. We're actually reconstructing the clock that came from the data source, the video source, on the far end. Now this is the breakthrough that makes it possible to say that we can replace the matrix switch with Ethernet networks. There's a lot of great benefits then to the industry once we do that. We no longer are constrained by a world where a new manufacturer or an existing manufacturer looking to upgrade their line has to develop a matrix switch. That is really the most expensive thing that we do in this industry. Um, it costs tens of millions of dollars to develop a matrix switch. Imagine if I decided I wanted to, to come to market and compete against the big players in the switching market and I'm going to design a new matrix. Well, you know, I can't just design a matrix switch, right? I need, I need six different sizes from 8x8 to 128x128. I need input cards, output cards, transmitters, receivers. I need literally dozens of products to make this happen. And some of them are very high speed electronics. Um, this is tens of millions of dollars in investment, months and months or years in time, uh, only so that I can keep up and catch up to the people I want to compete with. Um, and the worst part about that is all that time that goes into developing a high speed backplane uh, is time that I'm not directly benefiting the end user experience. The fact is when someone walks into a conference room and wants to give a presentation, all they care about is can I plug in easily, does the image quickly appear on the screen and does it look good. They don't care if it's 12 gigabits or 25 gigabits or 50 gigabits per second. That's not what's important and yet that's where our manufacturing community is focusing all of their resources. So what the technology behind the Software Defined Video over Ethernet Alliance allows is for us to to sort of relinquish the responsibility of developing high speed bit movers, matrix switches, relinquish that to the IT industry. Right? These guys build Ethernet switches that move terabits per second for $80 a port with better reliability than anything the AV community has ever developed. And now in fairness, companies like Cisco have, a, have an R&D budget the size of a large pro AV company. It's, it's frankly silly for anyone in our community to try and compete with them. So let's let the Ethernet switch become the commodity and let's focus on, on what makes the AV community add value, right? It's about user experience. It's about handling audio and video signals and processing them in the right ways. And SDVOE technology allows us to give up on having to move bits from point to point and instead focus around the edges of the network, focus on processing, focus on user experience, and focus on building great software to provide that user experience. So this is really a, a realigning uh, of how Pro-AV manufacturers and the community can, can focus development resources. And I think that's what's going to, to frankly keep us alive in a world where, where IT is trying to commoditize the entire chain. So this benefit accrues to the industry in the form of, of new creativity, right? No longer do I have to build 12 or 24 matrix related products to compete. I need a couple of well thought out Ethernet endpoints and, and a source of Ethernet switches. 
That means we've really reduced the barrier to entry to this market. So now we can expect to see small new companies with interesting ideas come in. We can expect to see large companies who, who have the resources to develop a matrix switch, but want to find a more efficient way to leverage their, their R&D. Um, so what, what we'll see is many new competitors entering into this signal management space. Some of them with great new ideas and great new products, and frankly some of them might have bad ideas and bad new products. But with all of that creativity uh, new, new found in the marketplace, the good solutions will rise to the top and we as an industry and as a, as a provider of solutions uh, will all be better. This means there's a huge opportunity for new leaders. Look at the history of the analog sunset. We saw companies that were, that were not known for their switching technology or switching capabilities become the now de facto leaders in those areas. This transition to IP is even bigger than the analog to digital transition and the same effect will take place as we see new companies establish themselves as the great new leaders in Pro AV. So in conclusion, uh, what I really want to say here is we as an industry need to need to stop trying to define half standards. Stop trying to invent new ways to transport bits from here to there. Ethernet always wins. It's 44 years old and, and, and nothing we can say or do uh, is going to stop it from, from taking over our industry the way it took over stockbrokers and travel agents and movie rentals and music distribution. So instead, let's focus on embracing that technology. Let's focus on using it to create replacements for the matrix switch. Right? So many solutions of AV over IP today make significant compromises on video quality, on latency. And we don't have to make those compromises. We don't want to make those compromises. This is why we have the matrix switch. Well, SDVOE technology allows us to finally replace the matrix switch and that level of performance with a flexible, scalable, Ethernet-based solution. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more, check out our website at sdvoe.org. Thank you.